Welcome to this lecture number 3, which is in which uh, I am going to continue from where I stopped in the previous lecture, that is on uh, ground water level fluctuations and environmental influence. And uh, here we know that it should be our endeavor to maintain the ground water level, which may be water table in case of an unconfined aquifer or it is known as the piezometric surface in case of a confined aquifer. So, this uh, ground water level should be maintained at the optimum range, it should not be, it should neither be too shallow nor should it be too deep and uh, to maintain uh, this optimum level of ground water uh, during all the times. So, we need to study the reasons for we, uh, reasons based on which the ground water level fluctuates. So, some of the reasons are uh, listed here, the first one is a stream flow variations followed by meteorological and tidal phenomena and uh, uh, urbanization is also one of the parameter which uh, influences the ground water level fluctuation. Uh, followed by earthquakes, external loads and uh, so here land subsidence, so here let me also write uh, land subsidence etcetera. So, these are some of the reasons or causes for the ground water level fluctuation. And uh, let me also continue. So, in the previous class we were discussing about the secular as well as seasonal variations, while the secular variations represent the uh, variation in the ground water level over a period of uh, more than a year. Uh, seasonal va variations they represent the variation in the ground water level within one year over uh, different seasons and there is also third uh, type of variation which uh, we can list it as the short term variation. So, in this case, so it is basically daily or diurnal variations which is very commonly uh, observed in uh, municipal water supply wells. So, essentially here you can say this uh, short term variation is a daily represents the daily or diurnal variation, seasonal variation represents the, the average annual variation average variation within an year and secular variation represents the variation in the ground water level over a period uh, more than a year. So, we need to consider all the three and uh, uh, during the oh, during the all the periods right from period ranging from less than a day to a period which is uh, uh, say uh, around a year to a period which is greater than that, maybe a number of years could be 5 or 8 or 10. Okay, so, all these things we need to consider. Now, let us consider firstly the stream flow and its uh, impact on the ground water levels. So, let us consider in this figure a, a stream with bed shown along the, uh, the sloping bed shown uh, here and then there is an impermeable strata. Let us let this impermeable strata consist of a hump as shown here in the middle and because of this uh, hump in the impermeable strata. So, the uh, water uh, streamlines, the ground water streamlines will show an upward uh, trend and uh, especially in the hump. So, where the height of the impermeable strata is at its highest. So, the some of the stream, the ground water streamlines, they, uh, they will be above the ground. So, they become surface water streamlines. And so, he in this portion, so that is uh, say from here to here, so this uh, water table will be above the ground level, 
whereas to the left of this the water table is below the ground as well as to the right of this section the water table is below the ground level or in this case it is a stream bed level. So, here what happens is so this portion that means from the hump to the portion where the ground water streamlines have transformed themselves into surface water streamlines. So, it will be acting like a effluent stream or a gaining stream. So, because here what happens is so the all the uh, the ground water will uh, uh, will contribute as uh, effluent or as a uh, will contribute to the the stream flow. Similarly, the downstream of the hump. So, what happens is because the it is the downstream part of the hump. So, here what happens is the the surface streamlines which were appearing here they again uh, develop a downward orientation and then they get uh, transformed into ground water streamlines. So, therefore, from this point onwards downstream the water table is again below the ground level and uh, this portion between the hump and the location where the surface streamlines again get converted into ground water streamlines. So, that will behave like a losing stream or an influent stream. So, in this case what happens is because of the uh, the water table higher than the the water table in the adjacent as one. So, the uh, the stream will lose so through infiltration as well as uh, uh, the through infiltration uh, occurring at the bed as well as the banks. So, therefore, it will be acting like a losing stream or an influent stream and in this in the middle portion. So, it is the rising water in a stream channel from the emerging ground water flow. So, this is how the stream flow will affect the ground water level. So, many times this uh, stream flow the effect of the stream flow on the ground water level is uh, also visible especially in case of uh, floods the flood wave. Let us consider in this case a, a flood stage hydrograph which represents the variation of stage which is essentially the water level in the stream at a particular location with respect to a standardized datum such as the mean sea level and uh, with and its variation with time. And in this case the time values are represented in terms of flood periods. So, flood period is the period uh, basically it starts from the duration from the time instant when the uh, stream flow or the discharge goes on increasing abruptly above the base flow which is basically the ground water contribution and then again after reaching the peak flood during which time there will be peak stage. So, this is the peak stage here again it starts the flood wave starts receding. So, the flood level as well as the flood discharge gets uh, reducing and finally, it reaches the the normal uh, level. So, this period from the increase from the time instant when the, the flood wave started increasing to the time instant when the flood wave started decreasing. So, this is known as a flood period. So, here it is indicated as the time instant between the point 0 and 1. So, here this is the, uh, the uh, stage flood stage hydrograph and uh, the difference between the the initial water level which is uh, the uh, the uh, here in Indian terminology it is known as the no flood level or the danger level and also the the highest flood level that is the, the final uh, water level uh, that is uh, the uh, water level during the flood peak. And uh, this one this uh, initial stage of flood is also the final stage because after the flood wave recedes it again goes back to this one. And uh, here this is the ground surface which is slightly above the flood uh, stage 
flood peak stage and in this case now let us consider how the bank storage volume as well as the recharge and discharge vary in case of uh, a flooding stream and uh, uh, so now let us consider the bank storage. So, essentially this bank storage volume is the volume of flood water which gets stored in the banks of course, which includes beds also and here what happens is. So, this as the, the flood stage goes on increasing from the initial level to the flood peak stage. So, the bank storage volume also goes on increasing and when the, the flood stage is at its peak, the bank storage volume is also at its peak and as the flood uh, stage goes on decreasing, the bank storage goes on also goes on decreasing, but more gradually not as abruptly as the flood, uh, uh, flood wave. So, here in this case if the, the time for the receding flood stage hydrograph is uh, maybe of the order of say 40 to 50 percent of the flood period. Whereas, in this case the time for the reduction in the bank storage volume, it may be almost uh, say uh, two and half at least two and half times the flood period. So, it is more gradual, gradual here and now let us consider the, the recharge and discharge volume. So, uh, which occur uh, due to the water entering the bank storage and the water leaving the bank storage. So, here initially when the flood wave starts and the flood stage goes on increasing from the initial level to the flood peak stage. So, the recharge goes on increasing and it reaches the maximum and again. So, this recharge then the recharge goes on decreasing and at this time instant when the flood stage is at its peak and the bank storage volume is also at its peak. So, here so the recharge volume which essentially is represented by the volume bound by this curve. So, this uh, recharge volume is also the maximum. So, here this is the peak recharge intensity and this recharge intensity goes on decreasing and then the recharge volume. So, this is the area here. So, that is maximum and once the recharge is maximum then what happens is the water starts leaving the bank storage and uh, so that will appear as a discharge. So, this discharge which starts from the time instant of the flood peak stage it starts uh, uh, increasing initially reaches a peak somewhere uh, between the flood peak stage and the the, uh, the first time flood time period. So, somewhere in between. So, this uh, the discharge volume is uh, this the discharge intensity is maximum and then so uh, like the bank storage volume. So, then onwards so the water leaving the bank storage will also be gradual. So, essentially this area which goes on increasing represents the that is the water leaving the bank storage and again. So, in about uh, two and half to three times this one. So, it shows the uh, it again uh, comes back to its original value. So, this is the impact of uh, stream flow. So, previously in the previous case we studied the we discussed about the uh, the the ground water level in case of a, a river which is having an impermeable bed with a central uh, raised portion or a hump. And in this case number 2 we studied the variation of the, the flood volume especially the bank storage volume as well as the water entering the bank storage during the recharge process and water leaving the bank storage during the, the discharge process. So, these are uh, some of the this one the cases of uh, stream flow influencing 
the ground water level. Now, let us come to what is known as the, the base flow and this base flow as the name itself says, so it is the flow which is existing in a stream due to the, an extended contribution of ground water. So, obviously the stream flow it originates from the ground water flow. So, the, this uh, base flow is a stream flow portion which originates from the ground water flow. Now, let us consider a flood hydrograph as I was mentioning here. So, this is the, the total hydrograph which we can also call it a flood hydrograph. Say somewhere here this uh, during this period there is a uh, precipitation or rainfall and then because of that, so there is a surface runoff increase and then it starts the flood hydrograph and it reaches the peak. So, this is the, the peak discharge or the peak flood discharge and after that it goes on decreasing and again it will reach the, uh, the total discharge will, re, will be equal to the base flow wherein entirely it is the base flow which contributes to the total flow from uh, this time and beyond. So, now here let us uh, uh, study the variation of the base flow. As uh, we discussed in the previous case, so because during this period recharge is taking place, the ground water recharge is taking place and unless the ground water uh, gets saturated, so there cannot be any discharge. So, therefore, this is this essentially the dotted line from here to here, this represents the recharge phase and then uh, there, there is no this one and if we from uh, this point onwards, the discharge starts. So, this discharge it goes on increasing, reaches a peak and then it starts decreasing and uh, so finally, it starts uh, gradually decreasing and uh, it reaches from this point onwards. It is only the base flow which is contributing this, uh, to the stream flow. There is no other contribution to the stream flow uh, uh, beyond this point. But if we consider the, if we neglect the bank storage, then what happens is, so the, the base flow hydrograph which is essentially the plot of the base flow with time, it shows less fluctuation. So, because so here what happens is, so this base flow hydrograph in this we are neglecting the bank storage and uh, because of this one, so it is showing the, the minimum base flow does not reach 0 because uh, there will be always some uh, one, but this is not the actual case. So, this is just the base flow hydrograph when we neglect the bank storage. So, here the minimum base flow is also less, is also is slightly more than uh, the 0 which is the actual minimum base flow and the maximum base flow is slightly less than the actual maximum base flow which occurs somewhere here. So, like this, so it is the base flow which essentially is the one which provides the uh, this one that is uh, which provides the extended uh, ground water distribution over uh, space and time. And it is essentially this uh, base flow in the in hydrology it is represented by the various uh, infiltration indices like the phi index the W index. So, which represent essentially the infiltration part and then so especially this uh, W index the initial uh, abstractions are also as one. So, essentially so the base flow represents the minimum total flow which exist uh, uh, the, uh, during the period where wherein there is no flood flooding. Now, so, this is uh, this represents the base flow variation during a flood hydrograph 
the actual variation shown by the dotted line and the base flow hydrograph neglecting the bank storage shown by this line, which shows a higher minimum and a lower maximum. Now, let us consider the, uh, the other uh, factors such as the, the impact of uh, evapotranspiration on the ground water fluctuation. So, in the previous class, we mentioned that even though ground water it is below the ground, so always there is some small portion of ground water which is closer to the surface, which is very close to the surface level and it is affected, it is subjected to evaporation. And uh, so therefore, what happens is, so because of this uh, small that is the portion of this uh, ground flow which direct which is directly subjected to evaporation near the surface so there the in the surface near the surface so the the evaporation expressed as a percentage of pan evaporation is very high as you can see here say so this is uh, say uh, some in the range between say the surface and say 0.5 meters or say maybe 1.45 meter which is uh, which is uh, one and a half feet so around this range in this uh, top layer so the uh, the groundwater evaporation which will be almost 25 to uh, it is more than 25% and even it reaches as high as say 50 percent of the pan evaporation rate there. But as we go deeper and deeper, so this uh, the evaporation effect, it will be less and less visible on the ground water fluctuation because so what happens is, so this is uh, uh, the ground water is uh, at a depth below this 0 0.5 or say 0 0.45 meters and therefore, what happens is the ground water evaporation of ground water expressed as a percentage of pan evaporation, it goes on decreasing and uh, even it may be, uh, so at deeper depths it may be practically negligible, it may be of the order of say 5 percent or even uh, less than that. So, this is how the ground water fluctuates due to the effect of evaporation. So, the effect is significant in the ground water lay, layer which is at the top that means from the surface to say 0 0.45 to 0 0.5 meter below the ground and below that the fluctuation that the of uh, ground water level due to evaporation so that will be significantly less. Now, let us also consider the effect of uh, transpiration because as you know, evapotranspiration consists of evaporation which is occurring at the open uh, surface or uh, the what open water bodies or the bare soil, uh, the soil moisture gets evaporated there and the transpiration is basically the water which gets, which uh, transforms into the vapor form due to the metabolic activity of the plants. So, the plants they during the process of uh, metabolism, so through this uh, stomata uh, openings, so they give out uh, water uh, in the form of water vapor which is known as transpiration. And here say uh, let us consider a day in uh, a few days in summer and the depth of water table and as you can see here. So, this uh, day 1 represents a 24 hour period, similarly day 2, day 3, day 4, all of them represent 24 hour period. And as we all know, so the temperature is maximum sometime immediately after the midday. So, therefore, during that period, the transpiration rate will also be maximum. So, therefore, the depth of water table will be uh, the highest that means the water table will be the deepest at that. And again as the evening approaches and then as the at the midnight and then so beyond that, so what happens is, 
So, due to the uh, reduction in the transpiration uh, activity, so the depth of water table, it shows a slight increase. So, this may be of the order say a few centimeters, maybe something like less than definitely less than 10 centimeters, generally of the order of uh, uh, say around 5 centimeters. Then again the next day, it happens the same thing. What happens is, so here somewhere uh, Im, uh, immediately after the midday, okay, the, uh, the transpiration is a maximum, the rate of transpiration is a maximum, so the water table depth is minimum. So, this kind of daily variation of the water table depth due to transpiration, it follows a, uh, you can say this is a sinusoidal wave. Now, let us consider the effect of the vegetation evapotranspiration essentially because uh, it is extremely difficult to measure evaporation or transpiration separately because when we plant, when plants grow on the ground, so there are some areas where there are plants which are planted uh, uh, artificially or plants which uh, grow out uh, naturally. Whereas, in the neighboring areas, so there may not be any plants. So, essentially, so in such case, so there will be loss of water from evaporation in the bare soil or the soil uh, uh, or the, uh, the area where water is, uh, it, the plants are watered by say flooding uh, and other uh, similar processes. So, here what happens is, so therefore, it is, a, uh, it is a well known practice to express this uh, total loss due to evaporation and transpiration together as evapotranspiration. So, here see in case of a bare soil, so the evapotranspiration is uh, the depth to water table, the plot of say depth to water table versus evapotranspiration, it follows this curve. So, therefore, so at uh, uh, this one, so at this depth, so there is uh, 0 evapotranspiration. So, this could be say few meters, maybe 2 or uh, 3, 2 to 5 meters or so depending upon the, the type of soil and, uh, and the uh, presence of the, uh, the impervious strata below. And uh, on the other hand, say wherever there is a shallow rooted vegetation. So, so these consists of plants whose uh, roots, they do not spread say more than say 1 meter uh, from the ground surface. So, in such case what happens is, so the at the, the uh, ground surface, the evapotranspiration is the maximum. And then as we go deeper and obviously this depth the depth wherein the evapotranspiration will be practically 0. So, this depth will be higher than the depth due to the, the depth observed in case of a bare soil. So, here, so the variation of evapotranspiration and the depth to water table in areas having shallow rooted uh, plants or uh, crops or uh, vegetation, it follows uh, this assessment. Obviously, here this uh, uh, the and uh, here as you can say this is a bare soil. So, this evapotranspiration is entirely due to evaporation. Whereas, in this case, so if you can say this is uh, due to evaporation and this is due to transpiration. So, and uh, at this depth which may be say something like uh, uh, say 1 to 2 meters. So, here so the, uh, the at this depth and beyond. So, the evapotranspiration becomes practically 0. And now, let us consider deep rooted vegetation like such as the large trees. So, for example, I can give uh, this, uh, this uh, banyan tree. So, this banyan tree, it is uh, one of the uh, one wherein the roots, so they also grow and uh, they also reach the ground. Uh, then uh, they grow bigger and bigger and thereby uh, giving additional stability to the banyan tree. And uh, uh, in this case, the roots, 
may go even a few meters deep also, maybe sometimes even maybe uh, tens of meters deep rarely. So, here what happens is this uh, uh, the plot of evapotranspiration and the, uh, the depth to the water table. So, it will follow a curve which is even which is having a at uh, the ground level the evapotranspiration is even more because it is a deep rooted vegetation and uh, the when it is deep rooted vegetation it also has a large number of uh, uh, leaves as well as stem through which this transpiration takes place. So, therefore, the evapotranspiration at the ground level is uh, larger and also so up to this uh, the this is uh, basically the it represents the root zone depth which may be of the order of say few meters say 5 to 10 meters. So, only beyond that the evapotranspiration becomes 0. So, therefore, so this is the this uh, diagram shows the variation of evapotranspiration with the depth to ground ground uh, with the, the depth to water table for bare soil, shallow rooted vegetation. So, wherein we can say the vegetation is uh, the root zone depth is say less below less than 1 meter or so less than uh, 1 meter. Whereas, deep rooted vegetation wherein the root zone depth is uh, even up to say 8 to 10 meters or so. So, in this case, so this is the variation. So, now let us come to the variation or the fluctuations in the ground water table due to other uh, meteorological phenomena such as the atmospheric pressure. And we know that, so it is the atmospheric pressure which is the prerequisite for uh, a low atmospheric pressure here is a, is a prerequisite for precipitation when there are wherever there is a low pressure formation. So, there what happens is the, the water the atmospheric moisture which is uh, uh, as well as the moisture which is in the clouds it has a tendency to precipitate and this uh, uh, precipitated uh, the clouds with uh, water atmospheric moisture condensed in them becomes heavy and then there the precipitation starts in various uh, forms of precipitation. So, here what happens is, so the as the atmospheric pressure decreases, so here so the these uh, peaks because the atmospheric pressure it is shown to be in the, the graduation it is the a higher atmospheric pressure is shown in the downward direction. So, therefore, this uh, as the atmospheric pressure increases, so there is no possibility of precipitation. So, therefore, the ground water the well water level which uh, essentially represents the ground water in an unconfined aquifer, it will be at its uh, lowest level. And as the atmospheric pressure decreases, so it represents so these points. So, here so the uh, be, there is a possibility of precipitation and then due to precipitation the well water level which represents which also represents the ground water level in an unconfined aquifer increases. So, like that so this is the effect of uh, atmospheric pressure on the ground water fluctuation in case in this case we have considered only the unconfined aquifer. Now, let us come to the the effect of precipitation in general and say rainfall in particular on the ground water level fluctuation. So, here let us consider the weekly hydrograph which represents the amount of precipitation which has taken place during that particular week. So, in this case this rectangle represents the precipitation depth in the week number 1. Similarly, this represents the precipitation depth in week number 2. So, like that. So, this is basically a stacked bar uh, graph with the width of each of the stack stacked bars equal to the duration of one week. And in this case now in the in red color 
uh, what uh, the average water table elevation in the wells, which represents the ground water level in an unconfined aquifer, okay, is uh, represented. In this case, as you can see here, so this is uh, basically okay, here we can say this is uh, uh, we can consider this to be the monsoon season in a region, say in India where the monsoon is uh, significant and uh, uh, this one. So, here what happens is as long as there is some amount of uh, average weekly precipitation. So, this results and uh, the uh, this pre, uh, the, the average weekly evapotranspiration is somewhat less than this. So, this uh, the ground water the average water table elevation will go on increasing and there are some uh, places where the average water table elevation is almost stagnant. So, those they uh, those represent the weeks wherein the total weekly precipitation as well as the totally total weekly evapotranspiration is uh, more or less same or uh, slightly less. In that case, it also shows slight decreasing trend and in this case, so here uh, say this uh, during week number 17 and 18, there is absolutely no precipitation. So, in this case, the precipitation amount, the weekly precipitation amount is 0, whereas the weekly evapotranspiration amount is significant. So, therefore, it shows it the water table shows a lowering trend. So, that is uh, shown by this and then again on the 19th week. So, there is some precipitation and because of that the water table again and as long as this uh, the depth of precipitation is uh, slightly more than the average weekly evapotranspiration. So, this water table goes on. Uh, shows a slight increase. So, like this the, the various uh, meteorological phenomena okay, will impact the, the ground water level fluctuation. Now, let us consider the, the tidal range, the effect of uh, tides on the ground water level. In this case, we know that. So, then in English there is say that time and tide wait for none. So, these tides essentially are uh, daily tides which occur with a time period of say 12 hours, I am sorry 24 hours and uh, 50 minutes. There are uh, also the uh, spring tides and uh, so in a, in a duration of say 24 hour 50 minutes. Uh, so, a point on earth will be closest to another uh, similar point on moon. So, essentially these tides occur due to the attraction between the uh, earth sun attraction uh, earth sun earth moon as well as sun and moon. Uh, so, this obviously uh, of course, sun and moon it would not have any effect on the earth, but at least the attraction between earth and sun as well as attraction between earth and moon it uh, earth and moon. So, this attraction results in the daily tides. So, which will uh, so in a period of say 24 hour 50 minutes there will be two spring tides, there will be two high tides and there will be two low tides and then similarly during uh, summer and then uh, during winter, spring as well as autumn there will be so tides. So, here let us consider so the tidal effect on the ground water level and in the left hand side in the figure we are considering a confined aquifer. So, here this is the, the ground water level. So, here although the, uh, the, the, uh, the ground slope will not be as steep like this generally. So, for uh, simplicity, so the interface between land and uh, ocean is represented by this vertical line and uh, so this represents a confined aquifer and uh, here so this uh, tidal range uh, is uh, represented at 2 h0 where h0 is the height of the water surface above the mean sea level at that particular uh, tidal location 
or coastal location. And then at a general distance x measured from, from the coast. So, this is the coast here which has been approximated as a vertical line. So, at a general distance x the tidal uh, height is equal to 2 h. So, here what happens is because of the tidal effect. So, the uh, when the water level in the sea is maximum. So, obviously, the ground water level at that level will also reach that will also be reaching that maximum and of course, as you move away from the from the coast. So, this uh, variation will also be decreasing and eventually at uh, some distance upstream from the coast. So, this tidal variation will be practically negligent, negligible. And so, this is in case of a confined aquifer and uh, because of this, so there will also be the, uh, the, the piece, the, this represents the, the variation of the piezometric surface in, uh, in case of a confined aquifer. Now, on the left hand side, let us consider the, uh, the tidal effect on the ground water level in an unconfined aquifer. So, here, so there is an unconfined aquifer which essentially is uh, spreading from the ground level here. So, this is the ground level all the way up to the, so the impervious strata. So, this is the impervious layer and similarly, this is the impervious layer in case of a confined aquifer and of course, so this is also the impervious layer, the top uh, confining layer which is also an impervious layer. And in this case, what happens is the same phenomena is observed and uh, the when the tide reaches its maximum range that is its maximum level. So, the ground water level will also be fluctuating and it will show the maximum level which is uh, h 0 times above the mean sea level and here in this case this represents the mean sea level and at any distance x upstream of the coast. So, this uh, ground water table will be having a, an increase in the depth in elevation given by h which is less than h 0 and at uh, some distance upstream of the ground water level. So, it will be 0, the ground water fluctuation is 0. So, this is the, the impact of uh, the tidal uh, water level on the ground water uh, level fluctuation. Now, let us come to the effect of uh, urbanization on the ground water level. In this case, we all know that in case of urbanized localities, so there will be uh, this uh, large amount of uh, households with uh, say practically impervious surface or uh, finished surface and so which result in a significant increase in the surface runoff at the same time significant decrease in the the total ground water recharge unless and until. So, there are some specific artificial ground water recharge structures are designed and uh, installed. So, the, the ground water recharge will be uh, highly insufficient. So, therefore, so this reduced ground water recharge will result in gradual lowering of the, the ground water level unless until we take measures to have uh, appropriate uh, artificial ground water recharge uh, uh, measures. So, therefore, the effect of urbanization in general in the areas is uh, very uh, what I should say is the reduced ground water discharge possibly. So, here this is uh, leading to 
unsustained ground water levels. That means, eventually the ground water level will be so deep that extraction of ground water will be will become uh, unfeasible and uh, will not be feasible anymore. Now, so this is the effect of uh, the urbanization. Now, let us also consider the effect of earthquake. that is E q on uh, ground water levels. So, here what happens is in case of earthquakes there will be a variety of effects as I was mentioning in my previous class the earth uh, shakes and due to this uh, shaking of earth and there will be uh, this uh, various uh, in the fault zones as well as in the various uh, ones. So, there will be uh, significant amount of uh, uh, damage to the earth and especially in case of uh, structures such as buildings and other uh, uh, engineering structures. And so, because of this uh, cracks which develop on the uh, in the buildings which also continue along the ground. So, here what happens is, so the, there will be sudden rise or fall of water level in the wells. So, if there is a sudden rise in the water level in a well, so uh, may lead to sudden rise or fall in uh, well water levels. If there is a sudden rise in the well water level immediately after earthquake, then we should realize that there is a possibly uh, some um, additional uh, 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 very high uh, ground water recharge taking place due to the changes in the subsurface uh, uh, soil layers due to earthquake. And similarly, if there is a sudden fall in the well water level, then it is an indication that so the the water from that particular well is flowing into say neighboring uh, locations, neighboring areas. So thereby there is a sudden fall in the uh, the water level of the well. So these are some of the uh, impacts of uh, this one. And uh, now let us also consider say the the impact of uh, the land subsidence as well as uh, external loads. So, these uh, external loads as well as uh, uh, the impact of land subsidence on uh, ground water levels. So, in this case both these land subsidence as well as these external loads, they result in a significant variation in the ground water levels. So, here what happens is wherever there is an external load applied. So, this load may be due to the load may be due to a particular uh, hydraulic structure such as it may be a hydrostatic uh, load or it may be some other load. So, here what happens is due to the application of load the ground shows certain amount of deflection, the ground the soil above the aquifer shows certain amount of uh, deflection and when this load is removed. So, this deflection uh, does not really get uh, removed for the simple reason that soil is not uh, perfectly elastic and so there is a lot of plasticity involved in the soil and uh, because of this so there will be fluctuations there will be impact on the ground water level so and then similarly this land subsidence and many places uh, this uh, wherever there is a external uh, uh, this one external 
wherever there is a say over saturation of ground water. So, there the land becomes the, uh, the soil its uh, unit weight will decrease from uh, gamma sat to gamma sub. So, in this case uh, in case of over saturated soils. So, this is a gamma sat changes to gamma sat minus gamma sub gamma w which is the unit weight of water and this gamma sat minus gamma w is the submerged unit weight of uh, water. So, therefore, when the just below just uh, when the unit weight of uh, soil is uh, at or slightly below the uh, gamma sat. So, it will have the optimum moisture content and it will have the optimum strength and as the its unit weight falls. So, its strength also falls. So, this strength the fall in the strength is many times so significant. So, that there will be land subsidence and uh, so this land subsidence. So, maybe this landslide is an example of that and uh, so because of that so, this uh, what happens is the ground water level fluctuates. So, these are some of the uh, impact of uh, the earthquake external loads as well as land subsidence and uh, so, uh, uh, this one we will uh, uh, now in this uh, So, this is uh, how so the, the ground water level fluctuates practically due to various uh, uh, causes various reasons and uh, so this fluctuation will result in the ground water level which is uh, either too shallow or uh, too is one uh, too deep. So, that wherein the extraction of ground water level or harnessing of ground water level becomes uh, unsustainable becomes costly. So, therefore, we should see that. So, by uh, adopting appropriate measures we should by analyzing the ground water fluctuation we should uh, ensure that the water table uh, in case of uh, the unconfined aquifer or the piezometric surface in case of the confined aquifer it is maintained at the optimum uh, depth. And uh, so, in the uh, so, we will uh, stop here and uh, we will uh, continue although I mentioned in the title of this one the uh, literature data sources as well as internet sources in this uh, uh, lecture. So, we will continue it in the next class. Thank you.